a show about kids enthusiastic about gardening? Well, it's coming up next. During my years as a garden designer, I've enjoyed helping homeowners create private sanctuaries full of beauty and wonder. I find each garden to be a fresh opportunity to explore and create uniquely personal spaces. These are just a few of the gardens I've helped transform into garden homes. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to The Garden Home, a show about design and blurring the lines between inside and out. Now today, we're going to be in the garden, but we're going to be talking about kids and kids' role in the garden, things they can do in the garden, and ways that they can connect with nature. In fact, today we're going to visit with a butterfly expert who will tell us the best way to attract these beautiful creatures into the garden. We'll also have some fun flying in the trees on an obstacle oh, course man, called a zip line. We'll also visit a poultry show and learn a thing or two about chickens. Plus head to Whitehall Arboretum to visit the fern stumpery. I'll also show you some giant sunflowers we planted from seed and give kids an idea for Mother's Day using orchids. Well, as you can see, we've got so much to cover in today's show. But first, why don't we get started with a project I did last year that involves an old bowling ball. Kids will love it. I don't know about you, but I like little projects, particularly when they involve kids and you're using something that's recycled, and also when it has a little sense of humor to it or whimsy, like these ladybugs for the garden. What we're doing is we're taking old bowling balls that you can pick up at a bowling alley. They're damaged, but you can transform them into something fun for the garden and get some assistance from some kids. Now you want to use an old beat up bowling ball and you want to put a primer coat of paint on it like I have here. What I did was pick up a quart of exterior primer and gave it a couple of coats. Now after the primer's dried, you want to paint the ball red and you want to put at least three coats of red paint so you get it thoroughly covered. And then after the paint is completely dried, apply painter's tape in whatever pattern you desire. Now this is where you can get really creative with the kids. Now you can make patterns just about any way you like. Uh, you can use these uh, stencil sponge brushes like that. See, makes a perfect little circle. Or you can take a stencil like this and apply them. And I like to do different sizes. And um, so I'm going to use a larger one here. You can do any size you want. May even make triangles. You don't have to do circles. Just, just have some fun with it. And you can see I made a black stripe down the center of this one. And what you want to do is make sure that this black paint is completely dry before you remove the painter's tape. Next, fill in the finger holes with some black caulk. So I found these little beads that already had pre-drilled holes, so I'm just putting in that black caulk like that. And then I like this really extra big copper wire, so you just stick it in there like that. And so you've got an antenna, and you can twist and turn them any way you want to give your ladybug a little more personality. Pretty swell, huh? It's fascinating to see the joy on a child's face when a butterfly comes fluttering by. I get fascinated when I see these beauties in my garden. They're just so beautiful. Lori Spencer is the entomologist who gives us a few pointers on attracting these graceful creatures into our gardens. Well, where we are is Mount Magazine State Park near Paris, Arkansas, and it's one of our newer state parks. We have 52 state parks in Arkansas. Well, what makes Mount Magazine State Park so attractive to butterflies is a number of factors. One, being so high up, we have more wildlife vegetation. We are a little bit cooler than the valley. Butterflies are cold-blooded creatures, so they need it a little bit cooler in, in the summertime. We have a lot of different wildflowers that support the butterfly's need for nectar, as well as their caterpillar's host plants and this is sort of a butterfly Eden up here because of those two reasons. The flowers that the butterflies are attracted to for their nectar is our native orange butterfly weed. That's a milkweed, so it's also a monarch caterpillar plant. And they love the, the liatris, which is also known as blazing star. They love all of our mountain mints, including our uh, bee balm, which is also known by Monarda, and just a variety of other wildflowers. 
Up here at Mount Magazine State Park, we have recorded throughout the year over 90 different kinds of butterflies. So you, know, you can't see them all at once, but in one day you could see as many as 30 different kinds. And here in Arkansas, we have 134 different kinds of butterflies. So 90 out of 134 is, is a pretty good number. Well, the importance of butterflies, or if you want to call it their, their job or their niche, they are the second most effective pollinators of wildflowers. They're, they're second only to the bees. So if we want more seeds for more wildflowers, we, we need the butterflies to help out with pollination. But where the butterflies are coming from, a lot of them are what we call resident species. They are up here reproducing year round. Some of them are migratory, like the monarch and the, the painted ladies, but each of these 90 different butterflies has its own unique life history. So you'd, you really would have to pick one. Say, for example, the spice bush swallowtail. It reproduces up here, and it spends the winter up here as a pupa. And so it just depends on what species of butterfly that you like to look at. You need to learn its life history and learn whether or not it's going to be up here. Well, the Mount Magazine Butterfly Festival is in its 14th year, and it was created to create awareness of butterflies and the need for their conservation. So a lot of the activities this weekend focus on seminars on how to raise butterflies, how to create gardens to attract butterflies, and kids can do make and take crafts and learn about butterflies and self-directed activities. There are a lot of nature hikes that are led by park interpreters, plus a lot of self-guided hikes. And there's concerts going on on Saturday night, and there's an exotic display in our visitor center's exhibit gallery. So there's a little something for everyone and everybody's experience level from beginner to expert. Well, if I could only give people advice about just one thing about butterflies is that they are an important part of our natural environment. They're kind of indicators of the health of an ecosystem. If you don't have butterflies, you don't have a healthy ecosystem. So if I could give one word of advice, I would say create habitat for them by creating a garden. And that way you can participate in butterfly conservation and ensure that we have butterflies for many generations to come. I recently had a chance to visit a place in the Ozarks where I got to act like a kid for a short time. If you love obstacle courses in the treetops and zipping down a zip line, then this is the place for you. Plus, it's a great place to keep in touch with nature and get your kids outside. Judy Cox tells us much more. Judy, this is quite a happening spot. Everybody's very excited about the zip line. Oh, yeah, they are. People really enjoy the flying pig zip line. We have uh, just yesterday or the day before, we had an 83 year old woman our new record holder so yeah Heavens. And, yeah that is fantastic yeah. we're very pleased what what is the most exciting component of it for you i love how it's bringing families together and friends this is a wonderful opportunity to get outdoors enjoy nature and it brings all ages together too because i mean you know we had you know 83 year old woman we've had as young as a four-year-old uh there's this a sense of getting out and appreciating the outdoors and supporting one another, bonding with one another in new ways. I had one participant tell me, she said, you realize we're making friends out there? She said, we come in there as strangers, but we're making friends while we're up there in the trees. So it's been really good uh, adventure. I'm very thankful for how people are responding to it. The zip line strikes me as a great activity for people to connect with nature in a totally different way. It is. It is low impact as far as the design and the construction of it, and it's, it's a wonderful way to have uh, people grow to appreciate what we have here. So you really don't have to be an athlete to do this, do you? That's right, you don't. That's what I love about this is that it is bringing all the generations together. It's ageless, you know. You have little guys and then you have the adults, and everybody's truly having a good time together, so it's great bonding. We've only been open for two years and we're already seeing just fantastic response. We're getting people from you know, many different states coming in and uh, driving the distance and having a great time. Uh, we have something for everybody. You know, we have the tower adventures on a walk-up basis. Uh, they can do the zip line and we have a motorized trolley that brings you back so it's a round trip. 
We've got the hot shot free fall, which is of course a one-way trip. <laughs> and then we've got the planks peak uh, with the climbing wall, so they get five attempts there, and that's a, it's a good workout. We have choices from beginner to advanced, so you know all ages there. And then our treetop adventure, uh, we offer you know a short version and a long version. So those that want to just get a taste of it, they can do that, and uh, those that want to spend more of the day, they can do that too. So we're challenging you know, our college kids, and we're challenging our little guys and our older people. It's just, it's neat. And we have a nice long season. It's open seven days a week. I bet it's beautiful to see this canopy of trees in the fall. Oh, it is. It's, it is. It's just beautiful. Flying it really through the is. trees with the leaves changing colors. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, if you love trees as much as I have, you've got to take a look at them from this perspective. I'm up in a tower 50 feet above the ground looking at this canopy of trees. You can see oaks, you can see dogwoods, sycamores, maples, the whole works. We're on a zip line and I'm about to zip. We're going to go 300 feet out there and 300 feet back. eight birds. I've brought eight. I brought 11 birds. I brought um, eight birds to this competition. My favorite would be the Baird Plymouth Hawk, which I have in my hand. My favorite bird is the Silver Wyandotte. My favorite bird would probably be a Baird Plymouth Rock. I have a white Indian rudder and it is a drake. It's just really pretty and it's really easy to handle. I like them because they are easy to hold. I entered the competition because I just love birds and I just wanted to learn more about them. I learned about the different chickens and the different birds. I'm going to take away a lot of knowledge of birds and how people will handle them and how, how much it just means to them. I entered the contest because I thought they might be fun to get to show birds. We had to go out there and get them out of the coop and pluck the feathers to make them look good. We had to wash them before the um, fair today, and that was a really fun. That was really fun to do. It would be really fun and exciting for me to enter this. To enter this. Oh my gosh! I can't even tell you. I'm so excited to show these, and it's just a real privilege to do this. I have learned that um, birds aren't just can give you just food. They're really actually fun to hold and you can get um, experience out of it. I oh, will love to do this again. It's so much fun seeing all these animals out here and all these people entering them and doing a great job. We washed the chicken. I washed the chickens and um, I kind of learned about them. Well we had to go through a lot of not really training but um, holding the animals, getting close to them, being okay around them. So I want to do this again next year. I think it'll be really fun. Now here's a flower that we can all certainly recognize, the sunflower. Isn't it beautiful? You know, I love these plants, not only for their beauty, but hey, they're so easy to grow. You see, there's a huge range of flower size and color among sunflowers. And as a matter of fact, these things can grow so fast, in six months, you can get them up to 12 feet tall if you plant the right variety, you have really rich, fertile soil. So as you can see, a plant that grows this fast and is this showy, well, it's an exciting thing for kids to grow. Kids, whether they're seven or 70, now, one of the things that's interesting about this plant, it's called helianthus, that's its botanical name. Helos, sun, and anthus, flower. So that's where we get sunflower. And they will actually track the sun. They will move and follow the sun, which is what we call heliotropism. So with that said, you can imagine that the sunflower, sunflower likes to be planted in 
full sun. And the interesting thing is I only used about four seed packs to plant this entire area. Some varieties will produce up to 2,000 seeds each for each of these flower heads. I consider sunflowers magnets because they attract us because they're so beautiful and easy to grow, but they also attract butterflies as well as hummingbirds and honeybees. And then for those insects that we don't particularly like around, such as aphids and ants, they can also attract those over here onto the sunflowers away from plants like my tomatoes and other things growing in the vegetable garden. So you see, the sunflower has so many purposes, not to mention all the things that we create from sunflower seed, such as cooking oils, medicines, paint, animal feed, and even biodiesel. So what is there not to love about a sunflower? Find a sunny spot in your garden and plant some. You'll be glad you did. You know, you can't go wrong on Mother's Day when you create a homemade gift, and especially when it includes a beautiful orchid. You know, there's several different colors of these butterfly orchids, sometimes called Phalaenopsis, to choose from, and they can make a great addition to any home. Now, have a little fun with this. Take your child and let them pick out the color of orchid that they want to get for mom or for grandma. Now, just use the original container the orchid came in and let the child express their own personal taste and style all over. Just let them have fun creating a very special gift. Use stickers, paint, or markers, whatever your child wants to make this gift unique. Your child will enjoy choosing and decorating mom's special surprise. As you can see, letting a child decorate their own container is a special way of saying, hey mom, I love you. Beautiful. We're standing in the start of the woodland garden at Whitehall. Whitehall is a historic home here in Louisville, Kentucky. It was built in the mid-1800s. The fern woodland garden started as a display garden for ferns and woodland plants here at Whitehall about 10 years ago. It expanded and spread into the woods here and now covers about an acre of ground. We started clearing land and we had a lot of wood laying around, so we decided to build what we call the stumpery. So there's a lot of wood incorporated into the planting and a lot of ferns growing on and around pieces of wood. The stumps provided a, a natural backdrop uh, four ferns and we feel enhanced the appearance of the garden. Most wooded areas have natural occurring trees down, ferns growing next to uprooted trees. It's part of nature, so we were very fortunate in having a wide variety of wood available to use to create fern beds and serve as a wonderful backdrop for the plants. One of the benefits of starting in this woodland was we essentially had undisturbed soil and it was a natural woodland soil. The disadvantage, the downside of the site was it was covered with euonymus, honeysuckle vine, English ivy, all the sorts of ground covers that create real problems for the gardener. We ended up taking cardboard from cardboard boxes, spreading it on top of the ground cover and covering it with six to 12 inches of wood chips. We let it set for a year and then we plant down through the wood chips, digging into the dirt beneath it. It has done an extremely effective job. One of the features of the garden is planting ferns on wood. We have planted a number of Polypodium vulgare in holes in the stumps setting around the garden as containers. The garden is open from morning till night. It's free. Come see us here in Louisville. Uh, in the words of the old southerner, 
y'all come see us here. I've got a house today in Michigan. It belongs to Sarah. Very interesting. There's not a lot of landscape for us to look at here. But we're going to do the best we can with the photograph. I think there's a lot of potential and particularly since Sarah loves flowers. Now to maximize the flower power of this place, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to start with some containers. And um, I think that a container here up on the porch and then there's enough room here uh, for another container and then one over here would give you really a lot of punch during the growing season. If you fill these with, um, say, purple fountain grass, it may be a beautiful uh, pink petunia, it would be excellent. So just think about some height here, um, and then something spilling over the edges here, and here, and here would, would do a lot. Also, Sarah, I think you really need to paint this trim board here all the way around. It needs to match the rest of the house. It either needs to be dark like your door, or just white, and I would suggest that you just go for white. Now let's talk about this, uh, the front landscape. Really don't have a lot to work with here given the, the photograph, but I would love to see a hedge. Maybe it could be you, an English U hedge that comes across here. Since you love flowers, I'm trying to give you a backdrop where you could create a flower bed here and just fill it with all sorts of, of uh, blooming things. And here on the corner of the house, I would probably do another U because you works so well in Michigan. And then something here just to give you some evergreen interest. Now with that in place, what I would do is take out all of this stone, this rounded rock, and make a generous bed that would come around like this and all the way out to the street. And then here's where you could begin to fill that in with some beautiful shrub roses uh, that would come up and it would fill in all up around the foundation like this. And then here along this edge, here, some low growing perennials and annuals. Here you could echo the pinks of the petunias by adding some petunias themselves in here. But I would just have a lot of fun with this and have a lot of seasonal color right here at my entryway. Sarah, I hope this helps. Good luck with your project. One closing thought, you know, we all struggle with getting kids involved in gardening and getting them to eat the right things. So try growing some plants that have the benefit of giving them good nutrition or giving them really a sense of whimsy or imagination when planting and growing a plant, like these eggplant, which are called Hansel and Gretel. You see the purple one's called Hansel, the white ones are called Gretel. You can use them on pizzas and things like that. Just get creative. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Until next time, from the Garden Home, I'm Alan Smith. More information about today's topic and other topics covered in this series can be found at plnsmith.com.